Hello and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a settings menu with two options, one to change the window type, either full screen, window or maximize, and also to change the resolution. When you click main menu, it will save these details to a file on your disk. We will be using resources to save the data so that when you start the game again, you can then take the settings from the file and reconfigure the window. If you click full screen and then choose a different resolution and save, then exit and run, you can go back to settings, set window, set it back, go to main menu, then exit. And if we run again, as you can see, it retains the state from taking the settings from the data file. Remember, if you like what you see in this tutorial, please hit like or subscribe and you'll receive notifications of future tutorials. Let's begin creating our settings screen. Just go to the root folder and then into the UI folder. And as you can see, we have a main menu screen and the pause menu screen. And we created these in a previous tutorial. So I'm just gonna open up my pause menu screen and we'll make a copy of this screen. But in the VBox container here, we will replace these controls with some different controls so that we can set the window mode. So we can choose full screen, windowed or maximized. And then we'll have another option where we can choose the resolution. I will duplicate the pause menu screen and then rename this to settings menu screen. Let's open that. We'll just close the pause menu screen for now. And then in the settings menu screen, let's just rename this to settings menu screen. We can keep the main menu button, just zoom in. And because we've duplicated the screen, just detach this script here because we would like to create a new one. We can delete the continue button. And on the main menu button, let's just remove and disconnect that. So we've just done some refresh on this screen because it was duplicated. And then let's add a new script and attach that and we'll call it settings menu screen. I'll add a child to the VBox container and search for options button and let's create that. We will rename this button to be window mode, the window mode option button and move the node so it's just above main button. Let's just go to our view and then add another child node, choose another option button and we'll rename this to be resolution option button. And then just move that to be under the window mode option button. Let's just test this scene here. And if we use the drop down, we can see we have a gray box here. So first of all, let's put some items into both of these options boxes, and then we'll style it using our theme. Now head over to the settings menu script, then click the windows mode option button and the resolution option button. And let's drag these into our script. Then create a variable called window mode, which is a type of dictionary. And the first dictionary item will be full screen, Call on display server dot window mode full screen. Our second option will be windowed or window. Call on display server window mode windowed. And then our third option is window maximized. Call on display server window mode maximized. Then we'll create a second dictionary called resolutions. Call on dictionary and say 320 by 180 vector 2i. And then pass in those two variables. Our second option will be 480 by 270, vector 2i, and pass in those variables. Then create one for 640 by 360. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I've created one for 640 by 360, 854 by 480, and then 1280 by 720. And the reason why I've done this is just to show you different resolutions. But also in the future, I'll show you what effect those resolutions have on the game. Ideally for this type of game, we'll only really need the top two resolutions. So feel free to just add those if you wish. And I just want to mention that all these resolutions here are aspect ratio 16 by 9. Now we will create our ready method, the function ready, and do a for loop the window mode and the resolution mode and we'll start to add these items to the option button for window mode in window modes window mode option button add item and pass in window mode and do a for loop or resolutions the resolution in resolutions 
then resolution option button, add item, and then pass in the resolution. Let's test that scene. Now, as you can see, we've got options inside the button. What we do need to do though is style it so it's in keeping with the rest of the UI. So let's do that. So we've got to the scene view. Let's now head back to the theme folder inside the UI folder and let's load our theme again. Let's just open this a little bit more. And if we click the option button, you can see that the menu that is dropped down is the gray style. Now the menu that is dropping from the button is the pop-up menu. So what we'll do, we'll style that. We go to add on the type and search for pop up menu here and just add that type and choose this option here and what we want to do is to restyle the panel so click a plus on the panel and we'll just choose new style box flat and then select that and then for the background color let's just select that choose the eyedropper and then just pick this color here for border width we'll choose one and for the border color we'll choose the purple that will now finish the style let's save that let's just go back to the theme so as you can now see when you click the option button we've styled the panel but what we now need to style is the hover option so let's go to the hover option here and then choose another style box flat option and then click that and for the background color i'm going to just choose i zoom in this color here and then i'll go back to the theme and then let's just check that option button again. And as you can see, that has now styled the option button much better. So let's test the scene. And then let's have a look at our drop down. So I'm happy with that styling now. That's more in keeping with the rest of the buttons in the theme. So let's now connect our buttons to our script. So for the window mode option, let's go to node and then look at the signals and choose item selected index. We'll connect that and let's just move this down so that we can then see our method. For the resolution option, let's choose the same signal item selected and connect that. Choose the main menu button, choose pressed signal and connect that. Now for the window mode option button, when we select an option, we'll receive an index. And what we want to do, we want to then go to the dictionary, pass the index to the dictionary and pull out the value. The value that we want to pull out is one of these here so we say var window mode equals window modes dot get then pass in the window mode option button get the item text by the index and then get the integer of that let's just print that value now let's move on to our resolution and we're going to do something very similar for that so say var resolution equals resolutions dot get then pass in the resolution option button, dot get item text, pass the index in, but this time we'd like a vector 2i. So we're going to return one of these. Let's print that. So say resolution and then resolution here as well. And for our main menu, we can just Q3 the scene. Before we test this, we just need to change this variable from one to window mode. I've made a slight mistake there. Now let's run the scene. And then let's just choose our different options here. So that's window mode and then get two and three. As you can see now, we are getting our values out. And then when we click main menu, that should then remove the settings menu from the game. Let's just head back to the script. And what we need to now do is to create a settings resource, which will contain the data for the game. And then we'll save that into the correct location. We can then load those settings when the game starts up, set the properties in the settings menu and also have the game configured. Let's head back to the UI folder. Let's create a new script and call it settings data resource. Just create the script. Let's load that script. And then we want this to extend resource. If we just control and select that so we can see that in the documentation, as you can see, a resource object inherits from ref counted and object type. Now, all of these built in objects in Godot are also derived from the resource. So, we may be using them in many of our different nodes without realizing. And they do actually have a lot of power to the resource. So, we can store many data variables in there, but you can also 
create functions. So if we had a resource, say for example, for a player script, we may store some weapon information, but then as we pull that data, we could use a function to aggregate the values together and give us a different result. It is possible to use JSON files or text files to store data in, but you may not get the added benefits of the resource file. So when you are looking at storing data and manipulating data, you have the option of using those storage files, but each one comes with its merits. We'll go back to the settings data resource and we'll create a class for this. So we'll say class name, settings data resource. And let's begin exporting our variable. So our export, and the first variable will be window mod, which is an integer and a default value of one. And the second variable will be window mod index with a default value of one. Our third value will be the resolution. We'll use a vector 2i and we'll set that default value to 480 by 270. And for the fourth variable, we will use a resolution index and also a default value of one. Our next step is to create a settings manager. Let's head back over to the scripts and we've got the collectible manager, game manager and health manager. So let's just now create a new script and call this settings manager. Go to project, project settings, auto load and let's add that script. To settings manager and just open that. Now let's add that, keep it as enabled and then close. Let's open the script. And the first thing we want to do is to get a hold of our settings data and because we've created a class that derives from resource we can now use that settings data resource now let's set the save path of where the data will be saved so we'll use save settings path and then we'll use this user path here i'm going to create a folder inside of this path and that will save the data in and then we need to use a file name and i'll call the file settings underscore data and then use this .tres extension. So for the settings path, this user path here is a special folder or a special path that Godot will use to store game data depending on the device you are using. If you go to the documentation and search for file paths in Godot project, you can see that for the location on Windows, it will store the game data in app data, Godot, app user data folder and then under the project folder name of what you've called your project so effectively if i just copy this then this is the path that this will translate to so it's going to go into this area here and then i'm going to create a game data folder inside my project folder and then inside that game data folder i'll save this file let's begin creating the first function which is load settings and I want to see if the directory exists where the settings are. So I'll say directory access dot directory exists absolute. And then I'll just check that save settings path. If it doesn't exist, then let's create the directory. And we can do that by using make directory absolute and push that path in. Then once I have the directory, I need to just check if the resource loader can get hold of that file. So it's again exists but then pass in the save settings path and the file name. If it does exist, then the settings data equals, and then let's load the resources. So you can use resource loader again, dot, and then load that resource from that path. And that will then give us this settings data resource here. If the settings data cannot be loaded for whatever reason, or it may be the first time we're running the game, then say settings data, equals settings data resource and create a new object and that will then create the settings data with all the default values and say if settings data is not equal to null then what we want to do is to then set the window mode and set the resolution so we're going to create some new methods for this so we'll say that window mode and just create the function for that so function set window mode pass in window mode and window mode index then let's create a switch statement which can then take the window mode and then choose the correct display server window mode so that'll be either full screen windowed or maximized so we can start the switch by writing match and then window mode and our first option is is the window mode 
matching to this display server window mode full screen. If the window mode is this option and we're passing that in, then what we want to do is then set the display server, set that mode to the window mode full screen. Then if our second option is if the display server window mode window matches the window mode, then we want to do something different and set that to window mode windowed. Then for the third option, it's window mode maximized. So we'll set that mode here. And then we need a default just in case we don't have anything correctly set. And for the default, we'll just set the window mode to be window mode windowed. So this match statement is just a different variation of an if else statement. So let's now pass in the variables into our method. So we can just say settings data, dot window mode and window mode index. And then back in the setting window mode method, what we want to do is to make sure we set those values. So we'll say settings data window mode is this, and then say settings data window mode index, and then assign the window mode index. So back in the load settings method, let's create a second method to set our resolution. Pass in settings data, resolution, and settings data, and the resolution index. Let's create a method for that. So set resolution, resolution vector to i, and resolution index, which is type int. So to set the resolution, we need to get the tree, the root, and use content scale size. And we can just pass over the resolution. Then let's make sure we're setting that data again. And that's everything for the set resolution method. Let's now create another method. And we're going to call this get settings. And we want to return the settings data. So let's pop on the return type, which is settings data resource. And to create our final method for this script, let's create the save function. We call that save settings. And we can use the resource server dot save and then just pass in the resource to save and then the file path and the file name. Now that this script is finished, let's go to the main menu screen. Let's zoom in and let's add a settings button to this screen. So let's just duplicate the play button. Let's rename this as settings button. Add settings to the text. And for pressed, let's just disconnect and then click pressed again and connect and just connect that to your main menu screen script. Then select the settings menu screen scene, hold control and drag that into the script. And that will preload this script into the main menu screen, but we just need to give it a variable first. So we'll call that settings menu screen. And then in the on settings button pressed function, let's create an instance of that and then use the settings menu screen variable from preload and instantiate that into this variable here. Once we've got that variable, we can then use get tree then get root and then add the child. So the settings menu screen instance will be added. Let's test the main menu screen. And before we click settings, let's just have a look at our remote. So the moment the main menu screen is added as the root, let's go back to the game. Click settings and as you can see the settings menu screen has been added but is overlaying the menu screen. So when we then click main menu this should then queue free and go back to main menu and that now works. So that's okay let's just end that. Now before we continue with finishing the settings menu screen what we need to do is in the game manager when the game very first starts we need to actually load the set of default settings and what that will do it will also set up the file the resource and make sure that is saved on the disk ready so head over to the game manager script that's in the script folders and in game manager in the ready method let's just call the settings manager and then just load those settings then let's put a breakpoint on line 10 and run the game now our debug cursor is just now waiting on that point so you can press f11 and this will step into this method and once you step into this method if you then look at the stack trace in the filter variables you can see information for these variables so as you can see the save settings path is the user path which we set the save file name 
is the settings data file. And what we'll do by using F10, so F10 once, and as you can see, the directory doesn't exist. So it's now going to make a folder for that directory. Then it's going to check inside that directory if that resource exists. So because the resource doesn't exist, settings data should be null. And if we look at the inspector here, we can see that it's null. And then just step over. So it's going to create set of settings data resource with default values. And now that we've got that settings data, we can check what they are. So if you go to settings data, if you click this object here, you can see the parameters in the resource. And this is where resources are a little bit more powerful than files because we can see this data from the inspector itself. Then F10 once, and it's now ready to go into that method. So F11 will step inside the method. And in set window mode, let's see what this window mode value is. So that's one. So we're expecting it to match something in this top three items because this is a fallback or a default just in case we've misset something. So let's just F10 again. It's not found the first one, the second one. It must be the third one. And it's actually gone to the default one. So what we need to check is why does window mode not match any of these? So let's just control and then select this. So window mode minimized is one and we're not actually checking for this. So I need to set the default value to windowed, which is zero. So that's a mistake or a bug. Let's open the settings data and for window mode, let's set this to be zero. And then for window mode index, let's go to the settings menu screen and let's just check. So windowed mode windowed is still one. Go back to that settings resource and that's correct. Let's go back to the settings manager. F12 to run that, stop that and let's test one more time. So F11 to step back in. F10, F10, F10 until you get to set window mode, then F11, window mode is now zero and should match this one here, and it does. So that's now fixed the issue. And then F10, F10, and that should now run. If we then go to settings, what we now need to do is to make sure that these options here reflect those default values. So now head back over to the settings menu screen and let's start to connect these buttons to the settings manager, which sets the data and then saves it. Let's go to the script. And at the moment, what we'll do is we'll start with the window mode option. Let's just delete that print. And now that we've got the window mode, we just need to say setting manager dot set window mode and then pass in window mode and the index. Then in the resolution method, let's do the same. So settings manager dot set resolution and then pass in the resolution and the index. And for the main menu button, we want to get hold of the settings manager again, dot save settings. Now let's create another method so that when we do access the settings menu screen, we are going to initialize those controls based on the default settings data that's in the settings manager. So under the ready method, let's create a new function and call it initialize controls, then get the settings manager and then load those settings a voice settings data variable of type settings data resource and then use the settings manager to get those settings and using our ui controls we'll get the window mode option button and the selected value equals settings data and the window mode index and then for the resolution option button we'll get the selected value which is the resolution index then in the ready method we just want to call initialize controls. I'll go to the settings manager script and just copy and paste this path into your explorer and just find the folder of where your game data is being stored. So what we'll do, we'll test the game and you should see the game data be created and then you'll be able to access the settings data tres file and then open that in notepad++ so that you can then view the data inside it. So let's test this now. We've got to settings, let's choose full screen, then main menu exit, then open it again. So it's already in full screen and it's in that resolution. Let's choose a, a lower resolution, main menu, exit. Let's test it one more time. So I'm gonna play the game. So you can see the resolution of that. Go back to main menu settings, 
full screen. I'm going to choose a really high resolution. So I, I did give you the option just to use these two. I just want to show you what happens when we choose a really high resolution. So we'll go back to main menu. But when I play the game, as you can see, I would need to make my level much larger so that it covers the viewport because the resolution now is so much bigger. However, you can now see the effect of those different resolutions and the impacts that it has on the viewport and the window. That now brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you like what you've seen, please remember to hit like or subscribe. Thank you for watching.